بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم Which surah is this? Almost every few days we hear it in Surah in Salat Al-Fajr. And today, even in Salat Al-Tarabih. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going? Maybe a quick reminder very very important and I feel we really really need to take this very seriously and that is pay attention to what we read and what we recite at least on daily basis at least we need to learn what we are reading every day there are certain things we are reading them every day certain things on weekly basis and after 20 30 years of reading that every day we don't know what it means and then we have to ask ourselves the very same question for aina tadhabun where are you going Many of us, we may not be able to translate at tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawat wa tayyibat. What is at tahiyyat, what is at salawat, and what is at tayyibat? What are we offering? What are we saying? And ask ourselves for how long have we been reading it? We recite dua qunut every night. I don't know how many of us will be able to translate that and understand the meaning of it. For how long have we been reading it? How serious are we when we, told, when we tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, every day, every day How serious are we? A commitment that we make every day with our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't even know what it is. Even the things that we understand, the translation, Allahu Akbar, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, at least we know the translation. How much do we really mean that and believe in that and accept that as a fact in our life that Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. When the world is trying to tell us that we are this and we are this, we can tell them Allahu Akbar. And believe me, from the time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited this, and until this day, everyone is scared of Allahu Akbar. And we know this. Something happened in the world. And there was some recording, someone said Allahu Akbar, they said, this is what it is. He did it. Because he said Allahu Akbar. Everyone, the world is scared of Allahu Akbar because they realize the greatness belongs to Allah. Every Fir'aun will be scared of Allahu Akbar. But how much do we mean it really? How much do we take it seriously that Allahu Akbar and Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al Azim, the one who is highest and the greatest? If we would really mean it, our life will be different. Just these few simple things. The point is, things that we have been reading every day, we should pay some attention to it. 
Try to understand our theme. Try to connect ourselves to our ibadah. Rather than just after salah. You know, every day. There are certain du'as we recite every day after salah. Imam raises the hand. Amin. And we all finished Amin. By the door, if I ask you, what did you just ask? You'll have to think, did I ask something? Who did I ask? This is what it is. Hearts are totally disconnected to the ibadah. This is very unfortunate. Hearts are very, very disconnected from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is any other statement that we read anywhere else, we would like to know what does it mean, what does it stand for, why I'm reading it. But here, every day, and I don't know. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to choose surahs for Salatul Jum'ah, Surah A'la, Surah Ghashiyah. If we can understand why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is choosing these surahs, why is he reciting them over and over every Jum'ah? Sahaba Ridwanullah and Majma'in tell us if Jum'ah and Eid was the same day, he would recite the same surahs in Jum'ah and Eid. In both of the prayers. Then in Salatul Witr, he's reading it on his own. What is it in Suratul A'la that he's repeating it all the time? And generally we can see public gatherings. He's reciting Suratul A'la. There is something in there. There is a message he likes to deliver. He wanted to deliver. Sahaba got that message from his recitation. What is it that we are getting from it? So it's important that we reconnect. That's the message. We reconnect ourselves. Don't take our deen for granted. Don't take it that I'm doing it for so many years and I'm okay with it. We need to reconnect. We need to understand what we are doing. We need to believe in what we are doing. We need to, when we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to be serious and we mean what we are saying and asking and talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about. So, as I said, even this is something we read a lot. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ And in few days, we really need to ask ourselves very seriously, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going after Ramadan? فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where would you go? What life would you go back to? When we go back, where would we go? What are we going to do? فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ And really, this may be a question that Ramadan will ask us. That I'm going. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where would you go? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with all that I have given you? I have given you these 20 rakahs every day. We are not expected to keep up with 20. But فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where would you go? You are in the masjid every day. Maybe all five prayers. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where would you go after this? We need to ask ourselves. Where would we go after this? Is Ramadan, end of Ramadan is end of our ibadah? God forbid, no one worships Ramadan. No one worships Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he passed away, we remember the khutbah, the first, first talk Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu gave, مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ Whoever was worshipping Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيُّ لَا يَمُوتِ Whoever was worshipping Allah, Allah is ever living, will never die. So that person's ibadah should continue. In simple words it's saying, whoever was worshipping Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which he knew no one, then that's the end of your ibadah. And if you were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left the world, Allah is alive. Continue worshipping. Can we say the same thing to ourselves? Man kana ya'budu ramadana fa inna ramadana qad mar. Whoever was worshipping Ramadan, Ramadan is going. And whoever was worshipping Allah, fa inna Allah hayyul la yamut. Ibadah should continue. And if we want to continue, we are serious about continuing with our ibadah, then don't wait for after Ramadan. If we wait for after two more days, guaranteed we are going back to the same point where we started from in just few days. 
It won't take too long. This is the time when we need to ask ourselves, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are we going? What are we going to do with our lives after that? Using the Quranic terminology, as we are using this ayah, another ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will present that in different way and will ask us, what do you want now? What do you want? مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّي إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُخَسُونَ Whoever wants the worldly life and the beauty of this worldly life, we will give them all of their good deeds in this life. The reward of their good... نُوَفِّي إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا We will give them the reward and the benefit of all of their good deeds in this world. وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ We will not reduce anything, give them fully. But أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا النَّارِ Those are the people who will have nothing in the Akhirah other than the hellfire. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةِ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ Whoever wants this worldly life, we will give whoever as much as we want in this world. This is see, our irada. Allah is talking about what do you want? Simple question. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. What do you want? You want dunya? I'll give you this dunya. Not as much as you want, as much as I want. As much as we want, for whoever we want. Then at the end, in the akhirah, because this person wants only dunya, then there is Jahannam. Woman arad al akhirah. Now, see, it's all talking about our irada. What is it that we want? Whoever wants the akhirah. Wasa'a laha sa'yaha. And will put the effort that is due for akhirah. As much as we are supposed to work for akhirah. Wa huwa mu'min. The condition is while he has the iman. Fa'ula'ika kana sa'yuhum mashkura. We will say, you know, no one will buy Jannah with his good deeds. Right away, Mufti will come. Which Mufti? That one. Who comes to our to whisper to us every day. It's locked right now. Right now we are whispering to ourselves. And right away it comes, you know, are you going to buy Jannah with your deeds? No. But we have to please Allah with our deeds. وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا Whoever wants Akhirah. That's our want. What is, it, what is it that we want? Whoever wants the Akhirah, وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا And will put the effort for it, as much as it due for the Akhirah. Which means, you want to buy a small house. How much are you going to pay for this house? There is another person who wants a bigger house. How much is he going to pay for that house? There is another person who wants a house in a very expensive neighborhood. How much is he going to pay for that house? There is a person who wants a house with a large land and a huge house. How much is he going to pay for that house? Someone wants a castle. How much is he going to pay for that house? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What do you want? You want Jannah. You want Jannah. So Allah says then, effort according to the Jannah. You can't just put effort for a two-bedroom house and get a castle. We can't put an effort for only for something that we get in this dunya and then expect to have Jannah. We should work for Jannah according to what it deserves, the price for the Jannah. That's it. This is what we need to pay. وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Their efforts will be appreciated. What does appreciated mean? Which means the reward of your good deeds will not even buy you a house of this dunya. But when Allah says, I will appreciate it, it means everything. He's not saying, I will reward you. He's saying, Mashkura. Your effort will be appreciated. That means, then, whatever you need, and whatever, more than what you need, because you put your effort, you tried your best, I'm going to give you the best now. Kana sayyuhum mashkura. Their efforts will be appreciated. So, a very important question at this time, before we 
and Ramadan, before we leave the masajid, before we leave all of these ibadat, what is it that we want with our life in future? What do we want for our souls? Parents, ask yourself, what do we want for our children? And then, if our children are grown up, and they are for at the age where they are getting education, let's ask our souls, what is it practically that we are giving our children? What direction are they heading into? The direction that they're heading into, the education they are getting right now, the steps that they're taking in their life, and the planning that we have for them for the next years to come, is that leading to piety, to taqwa, to the ways of iman, to the ways of sahaba, ridwanullahi ala majma'een, to the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or to some other direction in life. What do we want? Man arad al-akhirah, man kana yurid al-dunya. Two directions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. There are two directions there. People who want dunya, people who want akhirah. Of course, this is not to say we cannot get both. But what do we want? This is what the question is. What is our irada? What is our intention? What is it that I like to achieve? Get good in this dunya and the best in akhirah? Or get the best of dunya and then we will see about akhirah? These are normally the two ways that people think about. That let's do this right now. And then we will see when it comes to a time akhirah. He's not going to die now. He still has a long life to live. And how about you? When I retire, inshallah. So many people are waiting to do ibadah and to do something for their deen after they retire. You spent 60 years of your life in certain ways. You think you're going to get changed, you're going to change over, overnight as soon as you retire and you, you now you have no work. So from now on you will be seen on musalla every time. We are just fooling ourselves. Realities, realities of life. We cannot change overnight. We won't, we'll need another 60 years to change, if not more. Because we put our life in certain direction. Now to change is not easy. This is the time to decide what we want. Where are we going now? Where do we want to go? What is it that we want to do? We have to remember, Sayyuhum Mashkura is very important. Allah appreciates every good deed. Allah wants us to see that we are trying. We see the hardships on our way. I cannot be like those pious people. I cannot be a scholar. I cannot become a hafiz. I can make my children to be at that level. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not looking for our achievements. He's asking for our efforts. We have to understand the difference. What efforts are we putting there? How much effort are we putting? If our effort is right, in the right direction, with the right intention, you know, we perform. Alhamdulillah, we are doing some ibadah during the month of Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, we feel Allah, Allah's blessing. He gave us tawfiq, that at least we came to the masajid. We were able to fast. You know what all of this is about? We have jewelry. And the jewelry is made out of metal. And then... You know that there is that type of jewelry. It's all metal, but it has golden water. What do you call that? Huh? Gold plated. These are people who work with jewelry, I guess. It's gold plated. Inside, how, how thick is that water that was on the jewelry? Very thin. Inside it, it's all metal. Everyone looks at it, looks so beautiful, it's so shiny, it's so nice. This is what our ibadah is right now. Inside is all metal, but there is, is gold plated right now. 
we need to preserve this very thin layer of gold on us. We should preserve that. Because it won't take too long before it can be peeled off. And then I will back to the metal. Then we are not gold anymore in the eyes of Allah. Some sins. And all the gold is gone. Then again it's just metal. We need to preserve that. To preserve it, we don't have to keep up with all the ibadat in the way that we are doing it in Ramadan, but at least connection to them. Having that connection. You know, they say, this maybe a similar example, but maybe easier to understand, this gold-plated one, that they say there was an Eid gathering, big one. And some jinns thought, you know, we need to disturb these people. So they went and they went into the women's section. All women got scared. And they started shouting, crying, jinns are in our hole. They called the Morana. You know, Morana will not be invited to the Eid. Of Ramadan, every day we cry behind him. But after that, when the Eid party, he said, don't invite him, he's going to give fatwas. <laughs> so, they call him. You know, jinns came into our ladies' section. He said, well, it's easy, don't worry about it. Tell, them, or tell all of them to make wudu. They made wudu, they came back, all the makeup was washed away, jinns started shouting and ran away. <laughs> Realities. That's the metal inside. And there was a cover on top of it. Cover is gone. Same thing our situation. Don't be too impressed with our ibadat. Our ibadat is just like that. Sometimes we just get impressed with our souls. Just like the monkey asked the, his mother. That you know there were some people walking by. They were talking about hoors. That they are so pretty, beautiful and all of this. Who are these hoors? So the mother says, yeah, your dad says, that's me. <laughs> this is how we feel about ourselves. But Alhamdulillah, you know, now, if when anyone will say, As-Salihin, this is referring to me. We have to know our reality. That's the thing. That's the lesson. We need to understand our reality. This is a thin layer on us right now. Let's preserve it. Through our connection to the deen of Allah subhanahu through our connection to all of these ibadat, at least one page of Quran, few rak'ahs of nafil, little time for dhikr, little time to sit with our families and discuss our deen, and all of us together, we do some dhikr of Allah, we do some tasbihat together, so there is barakah in the house. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you are staying at your home, one is telling them, Karna fi buyutikunna, stay home. What do you do? Wathkurna ma yutla fi buyutikunna min ayatillahi wal hikma. The ayat of Allah and the hikmah, which means the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, keep on talking about them. This is the environment of the house. We see so many hadiths, and I'm sure we heard so many of, especially during this month, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leaves home, he sees. His wife is sitting on the musalla and she's doing athkar and tasbihat. He comes back a few hours later. She's still sitting there. This was the environment. That was the environment of the house. This is what we need to do. Of course, we can keep up with all of that with hours for hours as they were doing. But at least little time when we spend with these. As I said, mainly is to keep our connection with these ibadat. So that the benefit doesn't just go away. And... Insha'Allah, we keep on getting stronger and stronger with our ibadat and through these ibadat with our connection to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be steadfast after Ramadan with these ibadat and to keep up with them. I was mentioning, and I don't want to forget that, that if we really want something to, be, to keep up this connection after Ramadan, we have to make our schedule now before we leave, before Ramadan is over. And making the schedule simply means, let's see what are we going to do. And then see in what, what time I will be doing what. Fix the time. Don't keep it as an extras in life that inshallah I will do it as I get time. Then we know how we run out of time. We have to make time. So we need to set things, items to be done on daily basis. This is what I want to do. 
this much of Quran, this much of Azkar, this much of the Nawafil, these many Raka'ahs, and this is the time for Dua, this is Ta'aleem, whatever that is. So something on daily basis, things that will be on weekly basis, things that will be on monthly basis. For example, fasting every three days. It's fasting three days every month. At least that will give us some connection. If we look at the fasting of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was on a weekly basis. Every week is fasting two days, three days, every week. But at least if we can keep up with that, three days every month will be good. The least, the least is, I cannot even keep with three days, one day a month. One day a month. And all of us together. So we create that environment again. We keep up that with that environment again. Really, if we keep that connection, next Ramadan you will see that it will be much better than all previous Ramadans as we continue with our connection to these ibadat. May Allah give us tawfiq and keep us connected. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi, Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen. Mawla ya salli wa sallim dhari